Okay, welcome back to the Cambridge, California Investment Conference in Indian Wells, California. I got to tell you, Big Al and the little blonde lady are really, really having some fun out here. I am chatting right now with Greg McCoach. Greg and I get together at uh, virtually all of these conferences. Greg threatens to be a neighbor of ours up in <laughs> Semiamu, but you know the proof is in the pudding on that one. Greg, we were talking about companies that are exhibiting here, companies that you like. Uh, give us a couple of picks, if you wouldn't mind, would you? Sure. Here on the floor, this is a smaller boutique conference than what we just saw up in Vancouver, where there was almost 600 booths. But uh, there's, there's a lot of good value here. Uh, two companies that I'll mention, one, Oryx. Oryx is a, uh, a company that has two significant uh, projects. One is a silver gold project in Mexico, joint ventured with Fresnillo, a very deep pocket partner. Uh, so I like that. It's a nice, solid situation. The stock's trading around $0.75, cents, uh, very good share structure. They also have another project in uh, the Barclay uh, Gold Project in Sweden, which is a 1 million ounce 43101 calculation that I believe is going to move to 2 million ounces with uh, further drilling and uh, you know further uh, data coming into the equation. So I think that's a no-brainer from where we are right now, $0.75. Cents. Also, it's, it's likely that... Uh, we may see, uh, to get better value for Oryx shareholders, we might see uh, a one-for-one split out where, you know, the Barclay Gold Project is actually vended into a new company. Existing Oryx shareholders get a one-for-one. We'll wait and see if the company does that. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity for current investors. I do, too. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have to say a couple of things. Uh, Big Al has some stock in Oryx. Uh, Gary Cope is, an old, is a personal friend of mine. I've known Gary for a long time. Uh, love the guy to death. Love his wife. We were down here uh, for their wedding last a year ago, January. So I am far from being arm's length on that particular issue. Greg, you mentioned that you really like silver right now. I do, too. Give us some examples in that arena, would you? Well, I, I just think, you know, I in my analysis of the gold, gold and silver market, precious metals in general, I watch the gold-silver ratio as a good indication of when we should get into certain metals. And, you know, I just think the gold-silver ratio with what's happening is, uh, is a real indication, again, the jump on silver. And, uh, you know, we wrote it all the way up to 49 bucks. We've had this tremendous correction back to the $27 level. Now we're up at the mid-30s. I think we're getting ready with QE events uh, on the horizon, the QE3, that this is going to run us to the next new high, which for silver I think could be $60, $70 an ounce. So the opportunities in silver, not just bullion, but the, the mining companies oriented towards a good silver play with good management behind it, I think is a very timely uh, situation. Let's talk a little bit about the potential of a QE3. Now, I would maintain, as, our, as listeners are aware, painfully aware. I, QE3 has already started, as far as I'm concerned, with, with the gyrations of the Fed, with the, uh, the banking sector p- picking up so many of the, uh, of, you know, of, the, uh, of the bonds that are being floated, and then, and then the banking sector in turn turning that, the, those dollars into the economy. To me, that's about the same thing, I have to say, as, a, as an official QE3. Sure. No, absolutely. You're right. And yeah. I, we're going to see these QE events until the whole situation implodes, in my opinion. But Uh, It's hard to project timing on any of this stuff. No, I would agree 100%. Now, I also share your thoughts about silver. I like it a lot. The reason I like silver, as I've said ad ad nauseum on this particular program, is that I like the price differential between silver and gold. Uh, It's it's much, much easier to invest smaller amounts of capital in silver and, and maintain your... Uh, the advantage of of the leverage that I think silver offers. Absolutely unquestionably about that. Plus, the reason Kathy and I buy silver is we buy silver in the event that we'll have a currency collapse in the United States. Don't know if it will, don't know if it won't. But I'll tell you, I firmly believe that silver rounds, quite frankly, will be an, an instant form of exchange, and I think, quite frankly, their liquidity will be great. Yeah, I mean, silver's going to outperform gold dollar for dollar invested. I love gold. I've, I've been a gold bug for, you know, 12, 14 years now. But, uh, you know, silver is at that point in the cycle where silver starts to play catch up as we get into the latter stages of these secular bull markets and the precious metals. Gold usually leads the way early on, which has been the case. Silver's now catching up, and that silver to gold, how many ounces of silver does it take to buy one ounce of gold? Watch that ratio very closely, and you'll see that it's going to drop here significantly as silver catches up. I would agree 100% on that. Now, let's just talk in in a macro sense for the next three minutes or so. What do you envision 
for the U.S. economy over the next 12 months. I personally am very, very bearish. I can go into all of the reasons. I'm not trying to trying to scare anybody. Just fundamentals tell me that we're going to be you can edit that. Fundamentals tell me that we're going to be into some pretty difficult times. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I'm totally on the same page with you. It's hard to project, again, time frames on this because you never know these jackals in Washington and New York. They, they always seem to have an ace. They pull an ace out from under their sleeve to kick the can down the road, not to solve the problem. These problems, debt-wise, are insolvable. Europe, United States. Uh, in the next 12 months, just this short period of time that you're, you're asking me to, qu- to quote on, I would say the problems in Europe are going to be dealt with first, and that may temporarily strengthen the dollar, right? Oh, I don't think, I don't mean to interrupt you, but but no, you're 100% right on that. I think that the U.S. dollar at this point represents the best of the worst. I really do. And, you know, you you talk about a perfect scenario for the U.S. dollar. You You have the European, the EU, plus Great Britain almost on the verge of collapse. And so, of course, of course people aren't going to turn to the euro or the pound. Right. And ultimately, people are going to, instead of doing this fiat currency game of musical chairs, instead of coming to the dollar, right, which is really a joke based on our debt structure, you're going to see people come to gold. And eventually that's going to be the ultimate currency uh, of the final choice. And uh, we don't know the timing on that. But look, once things implode in Europe, the United States is next. So I think yeah, it's just a matter of time. It, it's hard to project when. But within the next 12 months, there's going to be shocking events that happen that I think are going to blow people away. I think there's going to be shopping, shock, shopping. Let's all go shopping. I think there's going to be shocking events that are going to happen. But I have to tell you, where, where, where I'm a bit at odds with many of our listeners is I really believe in the resilience of American people. We would not have gotten to the point, in my opinion, that that, that we reached were it not for some real individualism, some real ingenuity, some real belief in free markets. You know, and pendulums, I have found throughout the years, have a tendency to swing both ways. And I agree with Greg 100% that I think we're going to see some very difficult times. But you know what? This too shall pass. No, that's good. I I agree. There's a time of uh, of problems here, but how long will that take to get through? All the debt has to be removed from the system. Once it is, however, I think it's setting us up for the next age of wonder and prosperity where we learn from our lessons and we can move on and, and uh, there could be a whole new period of prosperity again. No, I agree 100%. Listen, you guys, take a look at Greg's newsletter, The Mining Speculator. Uh, website is www.miningspeculator.com. The I bull- knew that. The Bullion Dealership, Amerigold.com. There you go. Take a look at it. Greg is a good guy. We've known each other for probably 10 or 12 years now. Uh, he's trustworthy, uh, and, and I, I, stra- I say that only because in our industry, you know, you want to make sure you can separate the wheat from the chaff. Uh, Greg is very definitely part of the wheat on that one. Greg's a good friend. I trust what he has to say. Thanks, oh, Greg. Thanks so much.